Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's uh, video offering. Actually, this is our weekend edition. Good morning, everyone. There it is, live on YouTube. Actually, uh, we've uh, this is our uh, broiler chicken show um, that we like to do on the weekend, and we have uh, I've uh, we're actually going to try and move the daily briefs towards more of a um, a public offering. As you know, a bit of a sort of you know marketing sort of shill, if you will. So I thought I would do um, a public uh, broadcast today. Uh, who knows who's going to show up here? Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you had, so somebody in the lounge just said their phone just announced that we are live. So uh, we are speaking to the uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Google audience as well. Um, and actual fact, I gave a heads up to the people that are watching on YouTube that we're probably going to have some public people uh, in this chat room here on um, on YouTube, right? We've got this page rocking and rolling here, la, 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 la. So if you are on the YouTube page and you are uh, there, don't be shocked if we have some trolls come in here and, um, and, and do their troll thing. I mean, that's just the way, you know, the internet works. But um, we basically do this uh, broiler chicken show on a weekend basis, uh, weekly. Um, and I haven't done one on um, on uh, the public platform because, frankly speaking, <laughs> the crypto market has just been the poops for the past, you know, six eight months. So um, it really hasn't been a heck of a lot to get excited about. But um, Actually, it was really cool. We had our level one class this morning, and Grim just did such an awesome job. He's such a good instructor. So you guys, uh, anybody who's in the level one watching this video now, you guys are in such good hands. You're so lucky. Uh, but anyway, uh, Grim just did the volume impetus module, and um, actually a couple of really cool things came out of it. Uh, that uh, that class this morning that actually I wanted to actually bring up uh, to both the community's attention. Um, and uh, and even the public, you know, just let them know, hey, are you actually paying attention to what's going on here? Because there are some pretty big developments going on. Um, you know, kind of aside, uh, I'm actually going through uh, all of the um, the videos and uh, and um, uh, pictures and stuff from the uh, from my summer European uh, adventure. And this happened to be one of the uh, group shots that we did of uh, the London, the UK meetup. Um, and I was just going through my files and I thought uh, I was showing this on the site this morning, a whole bunch of site veterans, some recent uh, newly graduated alumni, Bobo, I was so proud of you. Uh, now you say your gaps filled in on your wall, you've got all your certificates. So rock and roll. And there's Raf doing such a good job as our TA for the level two and level three years. I know Josh is a party pooper. He had left by this time. We were all half drunk by now, of course. <laughs> um, and we even had like some older site veterans, Dominic and Jamie. And there's Tom. Everybody loves Tom for his scripts of re refreshing order. So I just uh, I just had a really fun time this morning and yesterday just uh, going through all the files and uh, getting uh, the documentary uh, all ready to go. Uh, lots of great interviews and stuff. So can't wait for that. That's uh, something to look forward to. Um, I suppose in the crypto space, something that really jumped out to me, which I thought was hilarious, was uh, um, I, if anything, this is probably a really good tell that we're probably getting a little bit closer to the bottom. Um, I thought it was hilarious this morning. Somebody in the lounge posted the fact that uh, – Mr. McAfee, they're going to do another sort of movie on his crazy life and his adventures in the crypto space. And he actually originally had uh, casted, uh, the group had casted, I think it was Johnny Depp uh, to play his role. Uh, but ironically enough, now they've given the role to uh, Mr. Keaton. And I might argue that, gee whiz, there's a heck of a lot of uh, a similarity resemblance here. Right? And I put out a tweet this morning going, Okay, I'm, uh, I think that makes sense. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? I thought that was so funny. But anyway, this is the kind of uh, fun stuff that uh, that we do on the site, just banter. And, uh, you know, we often say that it's, it's really important in this game to have fun at what you're doing. 
um, to have fun at this process, especially when you have to go through a bear and just simply wait for the goddamn bear to finish. Price to clean itself up so we can get back to work again. Um, so, you know, these are the kind of stuff that we do on the site on a regular basis. I uh, have a lot of fun. Um, you know, one thing that I did tweet up about this morning, which I was really uh, quite uh, uh, impressed with and very pleased with, was uh, on Friday, uh, we had one of our site members who was actually uh, in our, um, in our um, Vienna meetup, uh, Luduk. Uh, we all affectionately, and you know, remember Canadian, um, Brian's a silly Canadian, so he butchers these European names. And I just, uh, you know, for, uh, and half drunk, of course, uh, I just like to call him Le Duke or the Duke. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Le Duke, uh on Friday, um, he actually went to the Ethereum conference in Prague. Um, and we were sort of speculating. It was a bit interesting that as we were heading into the conference, they actually dumped price. And what was fascinating about this was I actually even tweeted this out that they literally dumped the market on Monday morning right into this just incredible buying window here. And I was wondering in the tweets that I sort of put out was, was is this maybe a sell the rumor and then buy the news event? Usually with a lot of these crypto things, you actually have the market go racing higher into the event and it's a like buy the rumor, sell the news scenario. So. I was very pleased, and we were sort of talking about this through the week. And then we had Leduc come on um, and uh, and give his presentation. He was actually at the conference. And, uh, I mean, you guys, uh, and there's probably some people on the YouTube page. Maybe you can just give some feedback for the regular people um, that that aren't site members that are watching on the YouTube page. What do you think? Did you guys enjoy that presentation by Leduc? I thought it, I thought it was just fucking brilliant. But, uh, you know, just post, you know, your thoughts on the YouTube chat room there if, uh, if you want to just let the other people that are non-site members uh, sort of get, you know, an impression of the kind of value that we bring on these daily briefs. Excellent, excellent uh, presentation by uh, Luduk, in my opinion. And frankly speaking, it doesn't surprise me that uh, price, um, it consolidated here following the event and then just exploded higher here uh, this morning. Um, and I had sort of, I'd been putting out tweets and you know, what's really cool about technical analysis is every once in a while, especially when you get these sort of little inside bars uh, set up here and you know, people that follow, uh, thank you Stan, I appreciate that feedback. Uh, and you know, that's uh, purely to help the uh, other uh, people in the public that just aren't um, aware of, of what we do on the site on a daily basis through our uh, daily briefs. Uh, and that's sort of one of the reasons why we're going to try and do the daily briefs as a public offering because, gee whiz, the value that we actually do through those shows is just incredible. I got a funny feeling that if as soon as we get sort of into a rhythm to do those public offerings, it's probably going to gain one hell of a, tra uh, you know, a following. So just incredible uh, good stuff that we do on a daily basis. But anyway, that's a side point. Um, you know, if you're watching this and going, okay, well, I, you know, Mr. Beamish, try and teach me something here that maybe I don't know about before. You often see these events where, say, the market rallies up, maybe comes into sort of a shorting trade location here against these highs, and it pauses. And you get one of these situations where if the market can break out through the top here, then that's just simply a continuation pattern. Um, and there are lots of traders that are just going to, especially off this is like a daily chart. If you drill down to like say an hourly or four hour or two hour chart, you might actually see some nice structure. And there was probably even like a nice little bullish bot setup that actually set itself up. And yeah, maybe we can go and, uh, and look through that uh, if you guys want in a bit. But the long and short of it here is very clear battle lines were drawn. If we had lost this low, then that would have been an inside bar failure. And we probably needed to come back down, eat some tails and wicks and that kind of stuff kind of conversation. Um, however, if we break out through this high, then like I said, it becomes a continuation pattern. And hopefully you could see, you could like literally have your buy on stop order just on a tick right above that high, place your stop just below that low. And if we, uh, maybe I'll do that right now. If we actually look at that chart, hopefully, you know, like all my veterans, uh, especially the guys that are in the, uh, 
in the lounge here with me, you should all look at this and go, all right, my hunch is that is a narrow sideways channel. Oh, and there it is. So there's a lot of sort of trader, traders got to trade, trade, trade kind of idea that will just simply, uh, where are we here? This is the top of the channel, and you can see there's a couple uh, tests of that level, but you might even just place a buy on stop order, and you're going to have your stop loss order just on the other side of the channel. And ideally, we would like to uh, have like a two to one risk reward on trades, sort of minimum. So at the very least, I like the idea of taking partial profits at this level, maybe moving your stop to scratch on the, uh, on the remaining position. And, and now you're just laughing, right? Um, you could uh, work sort of, you know, trailing levels. I'm going to let market structure help me uh, stay in the trade as long as possible. But if anything, it's just such an excellent uh, illustration of those uh, bull bear battle lines uh, that I tweeted out there just, uh, just literally like a, a day or so ago. In fact, actually, I did sort of a running commentary. And you know what? One thing that I really like to do, um, excellent. A Accent 2K2 says here, uh, Leduc, <laughs> although I think his name is actually uh, Leduc. <laughs> but he, he's such a sweetheart. He's such a nice gentleman that he lets me get away with butchering his name. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, Accent here says, the Duke did an awesome job and made me feel like I attended the event. And frankly speaking, I have to agree with you. I mean, he had a full slide deck. He went through all the pros and cons. And uh, you know what were the various uh, Casper he talked about? And then all of the various different um, you know utilities and, and ideas and coins that are coming out of uh, this Ethereum experience, I mean, it was just beautiful. It was it was a fantastic presentation. But anyway, as I had said just a moment ago, it just it it makes me completely understand why you know Leduc uh, presentation, but the material was the material was the material. It makes complete sense to me why this market popped. I thought it was actually a pretty good uh, conference, uh, positive karma, um, and a lot of sort of positivity coming out of the event. Uh, you know, so there was a cute little sort of, you know, narrow, what I like to call a narrow sideways channel. You could call it a bull bear battle line off the higher time frame. You know, traders got a trade, absolute sick ass trade location, as I said here. And, you know, like what I like to do, um, a, you know, because I know a lot of people in this space sort of, they like to talk in sort of hindsight. Oh, yeah, that would have been an awesome trade. Oh, yeah, that would have been. Oh, yeah, but you weren't there. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're talking about, right? I actually like to sort of go step by step by step. And what's cool about this, and if you want to follow me uh, in the Twitter feed, you can sort of see. I tweeted out that the battle lines had been drawn. So the cool part about it is you could actually literally see this trade setting itself up step by step by step. And this is what we do at TRI. It's, you know, I know a lot of people in the public they they'll come to you after that after the effect uh, after the fact right and say oh yeah i totally called this well i mean the cool part about what we do is we just literally step by step by step as the as the trade develops we walk you through it and this is what we do on the site day after day day in day out this this is what a trader's life is all about so um having some fun uh eth i think nice sort of leading indicator here um, in this space, um, you know, what's interesting about ETH, maybe we'll just backtrack a little bit here. Um, we've been watching um, a bearish setup on ETH for quite some time. And uh, it was, you know, it's a real touch and go. I didn't have no idea how this thing was going to play out. Uh, this was this uh, bearish bot. And some of you on, uh, on the, uh, on, you know, in the public, we're a little bit critical of me for for publishing this chart, but really, I mean, I'm just I'm just you know posting charts, and I even came back afterward and said, look, I didn't take the trade. In fact, actually, I took a long trade against these lows, and when I came back from my European trip, I was underwater, and so I simply said, look, I'm just going to have to manage this position, and as soon as it gets back to where I was supposed to sell it, I'll just clean the the position up. But that's here and right there. The point is, is I think this setup is still working away here. Um, and 
you know, this is, I think this is a really interesting commentary um, on that sometimes in the market, you're actually told to do nothing. The problem is, of course, and this is actually where I see a lot of people in trading fail, is they over trade. They, they try to push trades. They try to force trades. When sometimes the best thing for you to do is just absolutely nothing. So, you know, this had this bearish setup working, and I thought it was really interesting. We have sort of move stop to trailing levels. You know, had you taken this short, and the irony of it all is we talked about it through the summer, uh, how this short came in, and we were all like, there's no way ETH is going all the way down here. There's no way. Well, you know, <laughs> And what's one thing you got to learn in the business of trading is never say never, because <laughs> almost always the moment you say never, that's exactly when it's going to happen. But anyway, long and short of it here, this uh, short idea did work. Uh, we had a move stop to trailing level. And I might argue that the market is just sort of parked in a sideways range here. Um one might argue too, you know, uh, you know, I'm a little impatient, Brian. I don't want my money just sitting there. So if I was in the short, maybe I'll just get out on this uh, W that came in here. Fine. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say here is I've been thinking sort of on the long side, you know, and obviously uh, I'm a crypto enthusiast. I want to be uh, to have like a bull market. I want to be happy go lucky. I want to make money on the long side of the market. So I've been, you know, sort of personal bias, if you will. I've been rooting for the bull to come in here. Um, and it's just really interesting to watch how this thing just keeps going sideways here. So I don't know whether this ETH bear versus Bitcoin um, has actually completed. I, I just don't know. Um, and really, I don't think that we can get any sort of clear direction out of this story until we, you know, clear through these highs up in here. So, you know, ETH versus Bitcoin, um, it seems to me that the massive long-term structural bottom, which will probably create like a W off of the weekly price charts. And of course, all you guys in the public know how much I absolutely love weekly Ws. Hopefully everybody can see that weekly W trying to form here. I don't know what guys, do you think you can see this? Um, and maybe we can ask the public uh, over there on YouTube. Can you guys, anybody who's not a TRI member and who's just uh, sort of watching this, can you see the weekly W trying to form here? Uh, hey, there's Albert. Hey, Albert's on the uh, Hangout Andy's over there <laughs> on YouTube. You're double teaming us here, Albert. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You guys want to be on both pages? Go for it. That's fine by me. <laughs> anyway. The point of the matter here is I think that, you know, the Bitcoin winter of 2018, I think we could probably declare that that winter or so did I say Bitcoin? I probably should have said crypto. Um, that winter of two and keep in mind, 2018 has just been an absolute crap year for for most of this year. It's just been absolutely painful. Um, and it, it's been a lot of just sort of hurry up and do nothing. Uh, we've been sort of having fun uh, swing trading. Um, you know, Alex here uh, is in the lounge. He's a TA in the level one program, coming up with some beautiful day trading uh, uh, models. Um, and, uh, you know, we had an awesome presentation on Friday from another one of our members building mm -hmm. scripts uh, to automate the trading process from Sand. Just great, great work. Um, so we've been busy, and if anything, you know, uh, TRI is trying to get its act together and get itself into the 21st century uh, through the uh, through the um, uh, through this bear market. Uh, but if anything, what I'm kind of feeling right now is, you know, maybe the the winter of 2018 in crypto is slowly but surely finally coming to an end. And what we've noticed, uh, I've been posting in the lounge, we have a very active uh, members lounge. Uh, this is sort of our group chat room on Rocket Chat, our lounge. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of sort of more uh, positivity of this space. We're starting to see some pretty good looking uh, bottoms coming in. People are posting charts setups are rocking and rolling right and uh it just feels like 
uh, we're closer to the end of this bear uh, than, you know, say four or five months ago when, you know, we were slowly trying to figure out whether these, uh, these springtime lows were going to hold and they didn't. Uh, and I, like I said just a moment ago, what we really want to see, please, 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 is show us some weekly W's. Um, that's that. I mean, once this W, if it does come in, uh, fingers crossed, uh, comes in, then we can at least start going, okay, well, we've got these old previous lows. We've got now a W working. Can everybody see uh, the reload zone of this massive range, right? Uh, and I've often told you guys, especially uh, when we used to do those coinage shows, that what you often see is that the market will actually, uh, quite often, especially in alt altcoins, will actually go beyond um, the reload zone. And we actually see that the market ends up actually putting in the bottom and recapturing the 78.6 level and that becomes your floor going forward. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a similar situation here uh, with this coin um, and this story here. And like I said, very encouraged to see um, the you know the the stab against the lows, the counter trend rally coming back against these candle body lows. And like we showed you on that uh, on the dollar chart. Um, I mean, just, uh, you know, th this is like a trader's trade, right? Um, if, you know, it, and by all means, you know, we do have people on the site that do this kind of trading. Josh was in there constantly doing these trades. I mean, it's just beautiful watching them in action. But, uh, you know, if you can find 78.6s, especially if we do something, now this is a forwards contract chart, not exactly the same, but if you drill down to say like a lower time frame. And you start hunting uh, for gaps, you know, at these levels. I don't know whether we're going to find one down here or not. I'm just totally um, ad libbing this here. But you know, 78.6 is uh, candle body lows. Now, don't look like there's any gaps on this chart. But like I said, this is a forwards chart. If we looked at maybe like um, Bitrix or something like that, you might find that there's gaps down here. Just fantastic trade levels. Um, so the point of the matter here is that um, I was very encouraged uh, to see what's going on here um, in the space. Um, and it feels, and this is sort of why I wanted to do this as a public offering, it feels like we're getting closer to the end of this, this long, uh, painful slog. And uh, trust me, guys, this has been a long slog. Um, I remember I went through the dot-com boom clean up, same sort of thing. I mean, it literally took almost about a year after the dot-com bubble burst for the tech market to stabilize and start putting in Ws and starting to rock and roll. We're close. I mean, I'm not going to declare victory just yet. I really like what I'm seeing. And the traders, and you know, what's really cool about this is you see this sort of chart, reload zones, 78.6s, we actually see this uh, on a number of, uh, I like to follow this chart. Holy Jesus, Binance is breaking out here? Son of a gun. Man, this thing is just rocked it. Have you guys seen this? I mean, I was, I was surprised. Um, anyway, the point of the matter, yeah. <laughs> Stone cold. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Thomas? We need UK Thomas. Joshua, if you could reach out, Ed, did you ever meet UK Thomas? Uh, he's a big black man, and he's got the Barry White voice. Uh, I'm Barry White. Right? We need him to do, like, that's ah, a stone cold hunky. <laughs> if we could get that sound point, that would be fucking awesome. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I like to follow this chart um, as sort of uh, keeping an eye on, you know, both Bitcoin but also, uh, this is the Binance listed altcoin index that one of our site members created. This uh, this was created by um, uh, Benjamin, wasn't it? Was it Benjamin? Is this Benjamin script? I can't remember, but I think it is. Yeah. Um, again, you know, one plus one equals three, guys. You know, all you YouTubers and Twitters and Facebookers and Googlers that are watching this, you have to understand that in our community, it's a huge priority for us that we all work together to try and become better traders and build better tools. You know, San, for example, here, uh, I'll just show you, there's his cool picture. 
everybody on uh, Twitter. San, you want to say hi to everybody? You got a camera? Just say hi. All right, you got a microphone handy? I got a microphone. I there got he is. a camera. Nice. Yes. Hey, yes. Hey, look at that. He's yes. even got a camera. Look. Oh, and he's clean shaven too. Handsome gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Dan did, uh, did, and I don't know whether you, we can um, we can share your because you said that GitHub thing you were going to do as a free public script, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a good app, so it is uh, open source, right? So okay, I mean, so if you want to put the link in here, I'll just throw it on the YouTube page, and all those people on uh, on YouTube and stuff can grab that if they want. Uh, San did just an awesome um, uh, presentation on Friday for the community on the script that he wrote. Uh, that's GitHub. Here it is. So uh, you know, just for you YouTubers to sort of see what it is that we do on a daily basis on the site. Um, I've uh, put uh, um, Sen's uh, GitHub uh, script link there on the YouTube page and go have some fun with that. And it just, it'll just show you what it is that we do and, and what just incredible geniuses we're so lucky to work with. Thank you, Sen. I appreciate it. And of course, such a handsome gentleman. Um, okay, so back to our story. The point here is that, um, you know, people like W's or people. Traders, you know, is one of our sort of core concepts that we teach uh, in our education program, how to try and find a, a trade, right? Um, dumping my gun. Hi, Dumping my gun. Anyway, Dumping my gun says, hi, Brian. All right. Nice to see you, Dumping my gun. Anyway, um, I like to follow, you know, Bitcoin, obviously, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, right? Uh, but we also have on scripts for things like Binance, uh, created by good people like Benjamin. And if he's around and we happen to have this as a public script, maybe we'll dump it on the YouTube page as well. We also uh, are following Bitterix, but uh, Bitterix, geez, what a headache these guys are lately, eh? <laughs> now I think they're called uh, Bitterix International. They sort of just, you know, I guess because I'm Canadian, they just sort of dumped me onto the Bitterix International page. Uh, and it's logging me out like every 10 minutes, driving me crazy. And I noticed that a lot of people on Twitter are like, come on, what are you doing? So if anybody from Bitterex is actually watching this, can we maybe um, not, um, um, uh, you know, I don't know what it is you did with the Bitterex International uh, page, um, but it like literally logs you out like every 10 minutes. So, you know, I... If you guys could maybe do something uh, where that doesn't happen, uh, we'd all greatly appreciate that. I don't know. You know, we used to have the thing, you know, remember me and that kind of stuff like that, which would make life easier. Anyway, I saw a lot of people on uh, Twitter commenting about that. And, of course, a lot of people on our TRI site are like, what the fuck? So uh, if you could maybe, uh, if there's, a, you know, I know Alex Sturk, he's a buddy with uh, Bitterix Bill. You could maybe pass on the message if you do watch this later on, Alex. Uh, we all we would all appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to our story. The point of the matter here is hopefully you guys can see. And now, now that Binance actually Binance might even give us a big fat W here. Yeah, look at that. So hopefully, what everybody uh, can see here is uh, down. Oh, we're all going out of business. Up. Okay, maybe it's not so bad. Uh, you know, we have it's we have one gentleman on the site who actually takes personal offense to the reference dead cat bounce. So we try not to make too many uh, negative references about poor kitty cats, but nonetheless, uh, we'll call this a, a bouncy bounce. <laughs> I know I'm just being silly. <laughs> uh, then we come down and we test the lows. Do we? Are we still a bear? And you know this is absolutely what you want to see, guys. If and girls, um, if you are a trader, is you want to see the market come down against these lows, and just literally the sellers just get exhausted. Of course, you know at this point you can't give away altcoins, right? Hey, there's Be oh oh uh, that's not Benjamin. That's Joshua posted Benjamin script. Okay, yeah. So here is. Um, uh, thank you, Joshua. I appreciate that. Here is uh, Benjamin's GitHub. I guess it's his page or something. So this is another um, uh, site member, longtime site member. Benjamin and I have been working together forever. Um, so you guys on YouTube, uh, if you want to check out Benjamin's work as well, go for it. So I just uh, posted that uh, in the uh, chat right here. All right, back to our story. Um, 
you in essence this is this is really what we call sort of just uh, he's getting all excited joshua it's interesting that you mentioned that joshua in the uh in the hangout here goes i wonder what julian's thinking and it's interesting this morning um and i'll just post it really quickly i've got the uh uh where is he um uh, we do like uh yeah um i'll just quickly show you this this is our sort of our management room and he goes for of us there's all coin index taking off here i need to buy 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 <laughs> so there you go eh? <laughs> so uh yeah i think uh i think julian sees the same things you're seeing uh joshua so um so uh back to our story sorry everyone um really what i this is this is what we want to see is that you know, we go through a lot of volatility. And remember, of course, this was just like a train wreck, right? And if anything, you know, this is problematic. You know, we did, I did, I do distinctly remember that through the spring, we talked about seasonal rallies. Can everybody, uh, what is the big date in April that we should keep our eyes on? Does anybody remember what that was? Is there some, um, is there some sort of event? Let's maybe the YouTubers. Eric Van Velzen says, good to be back on the show. You're so cool, dude. Keep up the good work. We love you so much. Oh, that's sweet of you, Eric. Wow, I appreciate that. Now, if we could only get some girls to say that, man, my life would be set. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Anyway, yeah, that's right. Accent, very good. 420, right? So, you know, the irony of it all is that we were talking a little bit about this. Uh, there is the 420 event window right there. You can clearly see the cute little W that came in ahead of that event by the rumor. And then, of course, oh, crap, big old M's coming in, sell the news, event was over. And I know there was a lot of people that got upset at me because their particular altcoins really didn't do much. But you can see that was the seasonal rally window. It wasn't much to get excited about, but it was there. And then, and this often happens in, in speculative assets, in, uh, especially after we go through an insane blow off top like that, is we roll over and we come down and we break the lows. And this, you know, remember we showed you that ETH chart, this becomes that AB equals CD sort of scenario, right? So if anything, you know, and I just eyeballed this, it should make sense why the market had to come down here. And really as i said just a moment ago at this point you couldn't literally give away altcoins you couldn't give them away right what did we hear people saying about altcoins through this period here was there anything in particular that we heard eric van velzen uh what did we sort of hear that what was going to be the fate of all altcoins in fact i even remember there were some people that went on like uh, CNBC and, you know, like that. They literally came out and said, that's right, guys, all old coins are going to zero. And I mean, you know, the irony of that is that you obviously don't understand price action. You don't understand capitalism. Um, and really, you don't even really understand what the hell a blockchain is if you actually take that, 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 that thesis. Because you would, could make an argument that once you actually get one of these blockchains up and running and it's actually self-validating and, and you know if it's POW, people are actually getting paid to actually validate the network, this thing takes on a life of its own. And, and I actually think, and this is the scary part for the human species, is that we could actually get to a point where these you know, we call them altcoins, we call them cryptocurrencies now, but, you know, they're calling like Ethereum the world's biggest computer. I know they're saying it's the world's slowest computer, but nonetheless, it is technically an entity unto itself. Um, and so I think, you know, when people make those kind of statements, all altcoins are going to zero, that's a very blanket, that's a very, yeah, Skynet, that's right. <laughs> that's a very, um, it's a very emotional response it's not actually you know like i know for certain like there's people like alex sterk who i i respect immensely who their team over at ubic they're working extremely hard 
In fact, I would, I, you know, I don't even, I don't even really need to even look at a chart because I know fundamentally I love investing in people and I would be willing to invest in Alex Sturk just because I know that he's an honorable guy and he's working his ass off. We'll go back to this sort of phase, of course, you know, and, and the irony of it all is Alex, I remember last, uh, I think it was last fall, last winter, we had um, Tanjay. Tanjay, you're here, right? Yeah, there's Tanjay. Remember we had uh, sushi with Alex? And what was the one thing that Alex was asking for when the whole all my altcoin market was going absolutely crazy? Developer cycle. Very good. Right? Excellent, Tanjay. You remember? I guess we didn't get you that drunk that night, eh? <laughs> anyway, the point is, is that basically Alex got what he wanted. But to suggest that these things are going off the board and they're going to zero, that's crazy. So anyway, the point of the matter here is, and this is looking at this Binance index. I mean, Binance is Binance. You know, you definitely have uh, issues, you know, around all these various different exchanges. I'm not going to comment on the individual exchanges, but just as in sort of an index of, of the altcoin space, I think this is an excellent lesson for everybody. And, you know, the, the simple, the old adage in the market is you want to be buying when they're crying and selling when they're yelling. I mean, Eric, I don't know whether you ever wrote that down before. Maybe there's other people that have never heard that before. I often suggest when we do these daily briefs that you just sit there with a notepad because I throw this kind of stuff out all the time. But literally, that's one of the very simplest uh, ways to make money in this world. And unfortunately, last winter, I mean, everybody, well, really, you know, into the end of the year, into the end of 2017 and stuff, everybody was yelling. The great part about it now is almost everybody's crying now. now. Uh, I don't hear about any sort of get rich quick uh, ICO talk, you know, that BitConnect kind of stories. They're all gone. Um, and in fact, actually, I heard one person. Oh, yeah, it was the, uh, one of the takeaways from uh, uh, Ludic's uh, presentation was he was even saying that the Ethereum people at the conference we're saying, God, thank goodness, all those sort of get rich quick people are gone. And it's just the developers now that are actually working in the space. And when I heard that, I was like, holy crap, if I've ever heard of a buy signal, that's that's got to be it. <laughs> no, David, don't go there, please. <laughs> David in the lounge just goes, hey, 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 BitConnect. <laughs> You know, and you know, even within our community, like I said, uh, I've given you a couple um, um, uh, links to a couple of our uh, longtime members um, and um, uh, with all the work they're doing, right, San? And I don't know whether I'm allowed to do this, San, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, San, that's this guy with the cool artwork and he had his camera on uh, there. He just showed you. Um, San is is one of these consummate giver backers um to the space he's actually funded scholarships for our level one program because he believes in the program as much as he does and he understands the value that it that it, it imparts on people but he actually gives away scholarships on his own i never asked him to do this he was like no brian i want to do this i mean what a fucking rock star um to incentivize people to get a really good mark on the exam because this shit that we teach works. Excuse me, my French there, uh, YouTube. I'm sure they're going to be all happy about that one. Um, but this stuff works. And so he's kind of like, if I can somehow incentivize these people to get a really, really good mark on the exam, well, it's only going to serve their own purpose going forward. And I got to tell you, man, I mean, that's, that's, that's so huge. I mean, what a hero. PMA for the win. That's right, Sam. And that's the kind of environment that we really want to foster here at TRI. It's all about one plus one equals three. How can we uh, help each other? And the great part about it is the market is so big. There's so much money to be made. The one thing that really bugs me about this world is everybody ankle bites. They all try and screw each other over. Whereas there's so much money to be made in this space. If we just work together and go find good trades, a good trade is a good trade is a good trade. So anyway, well, Brian's gone off on a rant here today. Sorry, guys. Okay, back to our story. Once upon a time in a, in a land far, far away, 
we had the market sort of come down, consolidate, get nice and quiet. Everything's going to zero. And, you know, this is one of the core uh, tenants that we teach in our program is this thing called the reload zone. Yeah, there's a there's probably about 20 different people that teach fibs online. Um, I don't think anybody in particular owns any concept here. But the very simple fact of the matter is I used to work with a, uh, a long uh, at, at, a, at a prop firm and uh, one of the best traders that I ever met was a crude oil trader. Um, and he used to trade this 61.8 fib religiously. Uh, and his uh, sort of, what do you call it, screen name? Uh, there, I, there's names, right? Everybody's got funny names here on the internet. Nobody, uh, alias. All right. Thank you, Diana. I appreciate that. Um, on the site, he used to go by the name Mountain Man. So to try and help new people to trading to understand like 61.8, are you going to really remember that? You know, if this is the first time you ever watch this video, are you ever going to, are you going to really remember that number in particular? I doubt it. But if I start painting funny pictures and talk about Mountain Man and it, and can somebody in the lounge post that funny little Mountain Man uh, picture, the uh, the mountain dude that, that we always post whenever we talk Mountain Man. <laughs> so I could just put it up on the screen. I don't have it handy. But anyway, we always post this one picture of a uh, total Mountain Man dude. And it just helps you visualize levels. And that's really uh, what I found. I used to teach tennis to like thousands. It's people and of course now I've I you know teach trading to hundreds if not thousands of people um, and what I found is if you can inject sort of visualizations if you can inject uh, you know action pictures funny humor you end up remembering these things a lot better so uh, one of the levels that I really respect in the market and I literally watched a professional literally trade this level like a rock star for years on end. Uh, his, his official name, we'll give him a shout out, his name is Brandon Rigo. I don't even think he's at the, my prop firm that I used to work at anymore. Uh, but we all call him Mountain Man. That was his sort of name on, this, on the, on the uh, prop firm. He was called Mountain Man. Um, and then as I, um, Brandon Rigo is an action hero name. Yeah, I suppose so. Eh? It's kind of a cool name, but Anyway, uh, the point is, oh, Joshua, did you find it? Let's see what Joshua found for us. This better not be a naked lady. Ah, okay, well, that was that's not the one I was thinking about, but okay, nonetheless. Yeah, he looks to a certain degree just like this. I mean, he lives in uh, he lived in um, I think Colorado or something like that up in the mountains, and he used to snowboard all the time. So anyway, we'll leave it at that. The point of the matter here is 61.8 is sort of our start of our official buying zone where we can expect the professionals to start stepping in. Uh, and then I like to use the 78.6 and I've sort of affectionately called it the line in the sand. And actually our conversation about Ethereum a moment ago was exactly that, where um, it was the Bitcoin one, right? Where we often see the market can stab beyond, um, the line in the sand, then it'll come back to the line in the sand and then it'll actually, and then, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And then you'll like, look like a year or two from now, maybe Ethereum takes off here. Whoops. Uh, maybe Ethereum takes off here. Room, right? And you'll look back and you'll go, God damn, that W set right up off that damn 78.6 again. Line in the sand, right? So um, to help people, see this as a, um, well, actually, why don't we step back a moment and just simply, uh, maybe we should frame this a little bit better for you. Um, I, if I'm thinking about buying an asset, it's critical to me that, uh, and this is basically what we teach in our education programs. Um, you ideally want to have three unrelated reasons to take a trade. And I like to teach them just like we do in our sort of, well, I don't know, has anybody ever bought real estate? Let's see over uh, on the YouTube page, uh, we're talking to the public there. Is, there. is there one particular word that you hear repeatedly in real estate investing? In fact, they always say there's three words in real estate investing. Does anybody know what those three words are? 
Oh, Moat Media. You got it. So, hey, Dav. Nice to see you, bud. Location, location, location. So, if we're going to think about taking a trade, what I found that is just so important is this idea of are we actually taking a risk, taking a shot in, in an appropriate location? Um, and that's where this reload zone tool really helps. And they, it, this is the one thing that kind of bugged me about Bitcoin recently that I hear, you know, a lot of people in the media and stuff talking. Actually, it's probably best that we just use this one. Uh, where are we? If we subscribe to that reload zone concept, what do you think, guys? Is this really a good place? And I don't know. It doesn't really matter where we can go, say, off of this base here from last summer. Is this really a good place for us to be getting too bearish and actually thinking about putting on new short trades? I don't know. I have a really hard time, um, you know, like you hear a lot of people saying, oh, Bitcoin's going down to two, three thousand dollars. Well, it might. But the irony of it all is I've played this game so long. I actually think the statistical odds are that we actually have to head up into this reload zone up here to actually think about new shorts. Isn't that crazy? Call me crazy. You're crazy, Brian. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay, fine. I don't care. I mean, everybody's got an opinion. That's all the market is. It's just a bunch of people with a bunch of opinions. I've been playing this game for 20, 30 years. And, you know, one thing that I've learned here is it's dangerous to be hunting uh, short positions through green boxes. I mean, it's just that simple, guys. Just like it's kind of dangerous to be hunting new buying setups in red boxes. It's it's not good for your financial health. So uh, a little concerned when I hear people getting super bearish down here. And of course, what do you think the public's thinking at this point down here? Do you think the public's thinking about buying? Or do you think the public's thinking about all altcoins are going to zero? Going to zero. Which sucks. I mean, it's it's. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This isn't easy, this game of trading. But me personally, I would much rather be hunting longs through this window than hunting shorts. We'll sort of know that, quote, unquote, the bottom is in if we can start Wing out here. And as it stands right now, this is a very messy W. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is really messy. Um. But, you know, I can understand, and I've said repeatedly, I don't know if I, I really haven't done too many public videos lately, but I distinctly remember in previous sort of public offerings basically saying that I can completely understand the professional traders taking long shots down here. I can totally understand that, and it doesn't surprise me one bit. Now, after you get these bursts, burst burst, burst, even this one to a certain degree, but that really wasn't much. I can understand you, okay, well, look at the market, you know, lower time frames, things have gotten overbought again, um, and, you know, M's are starting to come in again. Okay, I can understand that, but ironically enough that those would actually be more like swing trades. The actual position trade, and, uh, you know, if you're brand new and you haven't really worked with me before, Maybe take a screenshot of this and file it for your records. And maybe just write this down. What are we supposed to be thinking if we ever see the market smiling at us? Any of you YouTubers know? You should know the answer to that. That's not a good sign. It's a bad sign. If you're a bull, if you're a bear, hey, it's a great sign. But the general rule is if you see the market smiling at you, it's getting ready to take your money away. So seeing this and then seeing this, it should make perfect sense. But now that we're here, we're not really smiling anymore. If anything, 
this is what I like to call a smirk. Where, and really, I don't know whether smirk is really the best reference, but if we actually start Wing here, right, and that's why I like to call it a smirk. Doesn't really look like a smirk, I know. But if we actually start Wing here, then that's actually bullish. And what's really cool about this, I hope all of you can see this. I don't know whether you can see it on YouTube or not. But, you know, green box, this was that higher time frame reload zone. Then if we go, say, here to here, we notice, oh, gee whiz, there is another reload zone okay, right in there. And we'll get rid of this. And then if we go even, you know, here to here, this is another reload zone. When you start getting reload zones within reload zones within reload zones, holy crap, are you talking about trade location? So put it all together. I don't know. I'm, I'm just not that enthused about shorting this. I actually think that there's more money to be made actually hunting longs. Um. I don't necessarily have any, I mean, as a, as you just saw there very quickly off of our Trex page, but we've got accounts on Yobit, on uh, uh, Cryptopia, on uh, Poloniex, on Binance, on Vault, on OKX. I mean, we got we got accounts everywhere and coins everywhere. Um and as I had said, what I'm actually starting to see, and this is very encouraging, is it's not just Bitcoin alone, but we're actually starting to see, you know, I and I, you know, here's probably a good aside is I love to use Litecoin as a leading indicator in this space. Um, and did I don't did any of you YouTubers see the uh, cute little um, Litecoin versus Bitcoin? The actual coins did like. Um, they, uh, I think I tweeted it out. It was so funny because you just, you would not expect this at all. But uh, Litecoin and Bitcoin had sort of a wrestling match at the uh, last uh, coin conference. Yeah, here, Charlie put this out. <laughs> this is hilarious. So uh, I don't know whether I'm allowed to uh, play this on, uh, on YouTube video. I might get into trouble with copyright. But you can see Litecoin and Bitcoin had a wrestling match. And the long and short of it is Litecoin won. And then look who pops out of Litecoin. It was Charlie Lee himself. <laughs> That's great. When I saw that, that was hilarious. And he totally, I think he killed Bitcoin. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> but I love Litecoin, actually, ironically enough, as a leading indicator. And the cool part about it, guys, I don't know whether any of you new people to crypto know this. But Litecoin, actually, it's happening event is about a year ahead of Bitcoin. It's I think it's about a year, isn't it? It's something like that. Litecoin's next happening is next summer. And we actually saw a really powerful, um, um, a really powerful uh, Litecoin bullish environment into its happening. Um, and you guys remember there was talks, there was a guy in China who was running a Ponzi scheme uh, through that pump. And Litecoin had one hell of a rally ahead of its uh, happening event. So I actually think that the first asset that's going to bottom here is actually going to be Litecoin. Um, and we look at the Litecoin data. Now, you know, there's, this is a, there's a bit of a problem with this because, you know, Phoenix, unfortunately, has had some issues lately. And actually, I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> this morning I tweeted out, um, you know, I, I, I like Simon Dixon. I think he is a capitalist. I think he's out to make money, and he's uh, pretty shrewd. Um, you know, I definitely wouldn't um, – I wouldn't just blindly uh, buy anything that he – and it really, you know, I mean, he's, he, he runs a company called uh, Bank to the Future who basically saved – Phoenix a couple of years ago. So it's my opinion that he's basically the equity owner of uh, Phoenix and he sort of drives the bus there, even though he's very quiet about it. I suppose I could chat with Simon one day uh, down the road here and we can talk a little bit more about his involvement. But my impression is as Phoenix goes, or well, as 
uh, Simon and Bang to the Future goes, so goes Phoenix. Uh, or maybe, you know, they're they're highly uh, correlated. Um, so, you know, whenever we're looking at Phoenix, we have to be cognizant of this issue. They did run into some problems uh, recently, and I'm sure you're all well aware of it. I actually like to follow just on a screen. I like to follow, uh, where the hell is it? If I can get the damn screen up here, where is it? It's around here somewhere. Uh, we can't talk about that today. Here we are. I like to follow uh, Bitcoin uh, versus uh, Tether Bitcoin <laughs> to get sort of an idea of how this soap opera is going. You can see they've almost closed the spread completely. Um, but, you know, we're all fully uh, well aware uh, and familiar with the fact that um, Phoenix kind of disconnected there um, and things got a little bit out of hand. Um, it looks like Phoenix is, you know, clean things up. A uh, little bit of a bottom is coming back in here. So I don't know whether this is ebb and flow. You know, full disclosure, I did have a, a, a bit of capital in the tether just sort of sitting on the sidelines. And unfortunately, through this event, I lost confidence in the way that tether was acting. Um, so I, I've walked away from tether completely. Um, but, uh, you know, the whole stable coin issue uh, on the site, we make a constant reference to the question of whether some of Phoenix's recent problems uh, with the tether and you can see it's still trading at a discount and this is what really bugs me as a site like Trex it's it's still sitting at 98 and change and this is what really bothered me about all this yeah well thank you uh, dumping my gun I, I mean I didn't panic through this I just slowly you know I don't get me wrong I think I probably uh, lost a few hairs and maybe even a little bit more gray hair on my scalp through this. But I just simply managed our way out of here and just slowly liquidated uh, our tether holdings through this counter trend rally. It was not fun at all whatsoever. And so as a result, I've, I, I, you know, it's fun to listen to these guys talk about stable coins, but let's call a spade a spade. None of them are quote unquote stable. But I actually found, which kind of bugs me, is some of these stable coins would trade at absolutely ridiculous premiums. Um, and, you know, like this, uh, especially this like true USD, as the Tether FUD was really getting going in earnest, this, this true USD took off like a rocket. So, yeah, and then of course, you know, new bits, we all remember new bits. Oh God, what a headache. Uh, still now sitting at basically 11 cents on the dollar. Oh, wonderful. So don't kid yourself, guys. There's no such thing as a quote-unquote stable coin. There is sort of proxies that try to be stable coins, but I haven't seen one yet. And what I actually saw, and this is sort of what we talked about uh, on the site extensively through our daily briefs, was you know um, there is a fairly large U.S. brokerage house that has two uh, initials uh, in its name. Uh, they recently bought out uh, one of the, well, Poloniex. Um, and uh, we have an old saying in the market that whatever these people tell you to do publicly, you're probably best to do the exact opposite trade because they really want you to actually um, take the trade that they're talking about publicly, but they themselves are actually going to be taking the other side of the trade. Very, very nefarious. I mean, I've worked in the brokerage industry for 20, 30 years. I mean, a very long time. These people have a horrible reputation within the community. The public doesn't know about it, of course, because the public is spoon-fed marketing material. But we postulate recently that maybe some of the tether uh, problems, quote-unquote, were actually helped along by others who are trying to promote their stable coins in the space. Good old crypto. And get used to it, people. I mean, this is par for the course in this space. It sucks. But if anything, you know, since I'm doing a public, uh, a public presentation, it's probably good that we have this conversation. I didn't name names, but, you know, you should be able to put two and two together and figure out who it is I'm talking about. 
Um, anyway, so the point of the matter here is, um, what was the point of the matter? Can't even remember. Uh, where were we? I was talking about something. Got totally derailed there. Uh, market's feeling a little bit uppy. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing. Um, I wonder whether the tether issues have been put to bed. I sure hope so. And I hope for Simon's sake that they have been too, because I wish him the best of luck. Um, uh, and, you know, I actually, and you know, it's kind of a funny side. We were joking on the site. There's one gentleman in particular um, who, <laughs> I mean, he's, all he does is he spends his entire life just dogging Bitfinex uh, and trying to uh, bring them down. And we were wondering whether maybe he was on, you know, companies' payrolls <laughs> to do this. I don't know. But anyway, um, Let's get back to talking charts. Um, okay. We've talked lots about reload zones, trade location. And actually, we were sort of talking about this fun chart. I like the idea of the market being bull. Keep in mind, everybody, you have to understand that um, they're not going to make this bottom easy. Nobody said this was going to be easy. And what I often suggest to new people to investing is, let the pros have this fight. Let them fight this out. Whoops. And, you know, let the Ws actually come in here and confirm. And then we can go and start hunting reload zones and all that kind of fun conversations. And that's where, as, has anybody on YouTube ever heard the expression, buy the dip? In essence, if you let the market bottom right now, I think, you know, there's probably, I think at this point, maybe the odds are like 60, 40, that this is a bottom, right? But let the market bottom, right? You can see the ebb and flow. And should the market actually put in the W, you're going to, in essence, go into hunting mode where you're going to work your bids. Um, really good example I did of that on the, um, actually with Alex Sturk's coin, which is kind of fun, uh, was I, uh, did this of Jumbucks. This is, this is back before Ubik was Ubik. Uh, the coin that they took over was Jumbucks. And I snuck my way in here. You can see the W that came in, right? Nice and confirmed. Everybody should be able to see that W. Um, and then I just work my bid and this is where, you know, like we have one gentleman on the site who actually just did the, uh, the, uh, the module on gaps. He's been trading gaps for a while now, but at least now he can officially say, okay, now I can put all this into context, right, Joshua. <laughs> but hopefully everybody can see this cheeky little gap that they left on the charts down here at the bottom. Um, you let the W come in and then just work your bids at these uh, gap levels. And if they can line up off 78.6, even better. Super sexy. Uh, and I actually did a trade in the uranium space. This guy isn't technically a uranium stock. He provides uh, this company that I just bought here um, on the Canadian venture market. Um, is um, they, they provide the aggregates for the construction industry in the uranium space. They happen to have a quarry right beside where these mines are and they provide aggregates. I love the structure of this. A lot of venture capital companies, uh, I just simply follow a model that was taught to me by an old VSC floor broker like 20 years ago and it works wonderfully. So I went and bought a little bit of this, but hopefully all of you can sort of see the similarities. Let the bottom come in. We're not gonna chase. We're going to draw our reload zones, hunt for gaps, and then try and line up 78.6s off of gap levels. Beautiful trade. And in fact, on the site, we like call it the shark setup. And then uh, Kevin, um, one of our longtime site members, well, not long time. He's been around a few years, I think. Uh, but uh, he loved to call it the Kavark. <laughs> Kevin, shark, Kavark. <laughs> Uh, and then we had, uh, and it just kept morphing and morphing over time. <laughs> so Gappy Varks. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but the long and short of it here is this model really doesn't change over time. It's basically the same thing. 
But hopefully what you can see when we look at something like those alt indexes, right, is that sort of basic same thinking. Um, uh, do -do 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 -do. Holy moly, these charts are getting messy. Uh, you know, off of these indexes, you're probably not going to get your gaps. Uh, they might, but I don't think so. But in essence, um, you know, we, uh, we're in that bottoming pattern. I mean, yeah, you could take a shot off of uh, the reload zone before the big Ws come in. But I actually think for like the public, and let's use this, uh, all, uh, this Trex uh, alt index. I actually think, you know, like hopefully everybody can see the W's trying to come in here. And really, you know, guys, seriously, uh, you know, grab that screenshot, throw it in your notes. What does a reload zone turn look like? Right there. Um, you want to, you know, this is a little bit more mentally challenging because if you're going to take a trade in here, and you're not like nanny nibbling. You're not like little old ladying this. You're actually putting a bit of money at risk. You got to blow it out if we lose these lows. It's just as simple as that. You don't have any choice. Um, you want to make it a little easier psychologically on yourself. Because keep in mind, we do not have a confirmed W in here yet. So that's why I said, I don't, you know, the bottom maybe it's like 60-40. I love the idea of a trading range long here where you're just going to simply buy against the bottom end of the range, look to take partial profits up at the top end of the range. Now, if we can actually go and break out here, then we start talking about that setup I just showed you off Jumbox where, gee whiz, you're just going to work your bid at reload zones um, off of wherever this thing exhausts itself. If we get this kind of scenario, then I think the odds start going up to like 70% um, that trades uh, buying the dip. You know, you've heard that expression before, buy the dip, where these kind of trade ideas work. So if anything, you know, I, I'm actually very pleased that the market was able to pivot through here. Keep in mind, of course, you know, this is the weekend. It's Sunday. We'll have to see what the higher ups feel like tomorrow morning. Uh, one thing that sort of, le and if anything, this isn't a bad sort of segue. One thing that concerns me a little bit is this is what I would consider like the professional traders, Monday to Friday. You know, uh, most of you guys, I would say, are just like diehard crypto enthusiasts. Keep in mind that, you know, if we go out onto the street, and I do this all the time, I say, well, do you own any Bitcoins? No. Uh, do you own any altcoins? No. Have you ever heard of Bitcoin? Oh, yeah, I heard about it a little bit, right? That's sort of where I think the public is right now. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. Neo says that be careful on these alt indexes. A lot of this has to do with uh, the Bitcoin cash. Uh, are, aren't we supposed to call it Bcash? Isn't that what he wants us to be calling it? Isn't that the name? I don't know. I thought that was the name he wants to, us to use. Bcash? Um, they just had a, a hard fork, didn't they? Right. Um, where the hell's my Bitcoin uh, Bcash chart on here somewhere? Uh, yeah, right here. And what I found really interesting about this was, and I don't know whether it's correlated or not, but and keep in mind, I own a whack of this anyways, right? Because I got you know I own basically everything on under the sun here. <laughs> but I did notice that we when we got down, can you see this reload zone? Um, Neo, that's Rob, right? Rob, is that you, Rob? You're posting in the TRI lounge, so I'm not quite sure where you are, Rob. <laughs> You're not in the hangout. Usually I see your little shark image, but I don't see you there. Are you over on YouTube? I don't know where you are. Yeah, there you are. I see you, uh, Joshua, reacted with a meta. <laughs> November, uh, yeah, so... What I found really interesting about this story, and hopefully everybody can see the reload zone concept here. Can you, can you see it? Hopefully you can. I heard that they are doing a hard fork, uh, which is one of the reasons why I think this thing is rallying. But I personally think, and you know, call Brian crazy. Brian is half the time crazy. Um, is I got the impression that this thing actually started to perk up when I started hearing talks about 51% attack. 
I might argue, and frankly, I'm not a Bcash uh, supporter. I'm not real. I, you know, the whole point of decentralization is to decentralize authority. So technically, Bcash doesn't really meet the classic criteria of what I want to be investing in when it comes to the blockchain. But that's another conversation for another day. My hunch is what ends up happening here, and you can kind of see this already developing. Can everybody see this kilo right there? Hopefully you can see that. And actually the level oneers, uh, they were just sort of talking a little bit about this today. My hunch is we're probably going to do something, uh, and I suppose I can go off of this high here, something like this. It's a little tough to see right now. That's why I think that this rally is going to make it all the way up there. Then you have your fork, right? Then the pullback. And then if this thing really has bottomed, it's going to look something like that. That's that's sort of my hunch. And that's all it is. It's just a hunch. Hopefully everybody can see uh, reload zone buyers. The traders got a trade. They're getting paid right now. And you might even argue that, well, we could take a fib. Um, I don't know whether I would go off of that one. We could go off of here, there to there, because that level is almost exactly the same. And you should be able to see, and it should make sense, why the market stalled right here, right? That reload short zone of the range there. So I do like the idea, and it makes sense to me, that we're probably going to run into pretty significant resistance right up in this area. And then watch what happens. Let's assume that we do pop up into here. And we're going to do our FIB back down to the lows. And notice, remember I drew this horizontal support and resistance level right there, right? Notice that our reload zone, 78.6, lines up almost perfectly with that level right in there. So this is, again, this is exactly what I was just talking about a moment ago. Our line in the sand, right? And if I'm not mistaken... If we stretch this out, and actually, you know what? Uh, Mr. San even built us a script. Let's see. Oh, look at that, son of a gun. There are gaps here. There's two gaps. And this is so cool, right? Uh, you know, you YouTubers, remember I said one plus one equals three? I gave, I, we talked about San earlier and his wonderful scripts and Benjamin, you know, everybody helping each other out on this thing. San actually built a script on TradingView to help us actually see where the gaps are, <laughs> which is so awesome. So the point here, though, and thank you, Joshua, I love using the term confluence. Hopefully everybody can see, you know, buyers. Is this a good place to be a buyer of this asset right here? What do you think? I don't know. I don't think so. Did we say red boxes were buying windows or selling windows? Remember, we looked at that crazy-ass Bitcoin chart all the way up top, right? So I can understand the traders are going to short this. That doesn't surprise me. If the market can actually confirm, though, can you see how this could make a really big W here? So what we might find is that the position people start seeing this w and start going damn that's a stone cold honky and as i said earlier remember off of uh which chart was it one of these charts uh do 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 do, do. well looks like it's gone too many charts my head's gonna explode uh we never did talk about litecoin i think litecoin's an awesome buy in here um anyway i thought i just mentioned it earlier you're going to let this w come in then you're going to drag your fib tool to wherever the ultimate rally peak is and let's assume that this is the high that comes in i don't know you're going to draw your green boxes off of reload zones and then my suggestion is See if you can find gaps that line up with these FIB levels. And in this particular case, if we happen to top out here at 7, 18, 97, who knows where the hell the top is. But can you see horizontal support and resistance? Orange line. Gaps. Thank you, Sen, for the fucking kick-ass scripts. 
and the line in the sand. And then if we think sort of like head and shoulders kind of idea, what does a fractal bottom look like? Well, interesting how a right hand shoulder anywhere down in here would give us that head and shoulders bottom. It's kind of cool, eh? So I can see the bottom starting to form. Now, the key here is for this guy in particular, we really want to see the market blast through that high. So what high is that there? 589.31 and today's high here, 592. So we can technically say that on an intraday basis, this has confirmed this W. Now, actually, this is a really cool conversation that the level oneers had this morning as well. Was someone asked, well, you know, do I go off of candle bodies, i.e. change this to a close line? If I do that, can you see how, number one, this is a daily chart, so we're going to have to wait a while before we actually uh, know that this has actually confirmed the breakout. Or do I go off of candles, and in which case the intraday candle bar high has actually broken that level? I think the simple answer for you is uh, candle body closes, i.e. close line signals, are more of an institutional tool, and they're going to be more reliable. I would say that if you go off of candles, and we can even use, you know, a can you can do candle, you can do bar chart if you want. This is how I learned how to trade 30 years ago. Just there's the mark, 589.31, right? We'll even write that down. You're going to buy the W here on any kind of break of that level, and that has broken, so technically that buy signal is active, and you're gonna simply risk to a break of this low here, 406. Now, to justify, because keep in mind, that's $183 of risk. So if I'm gonna take, and let's see, uh, let's see if we can use, um, um, uh, some simple logic here, and I don't even know if you YouTubers know this, but if I'm going to take $183 worth of risk, what roughly should be the, um, the, um, the minimum that I want to be able to justifiably see as a reward here? The number is $183. And I know all you guys in the lounge, you all got it because you guys are rock stars. That's right. Well, and jokes, you're Thomas, aren't you? We were just talking about you, right? So the question ultimately is, before I even take this trade, I should ask myself, is that even realistic? And what is the simple, and, and really what I'm looking for, I'll even type it in the YouTube um, the YouTube uh, chat box so people who are watching this later on can see this. What I really want to see is a two to one uh, reward uh, for risk taken. And really what we have to say is potential reward because you don't know if it's going to work or not. But the bottom line here is what we want to see is we want to see that it's worth our while to actually take the risk. Now, you know, YouTubers, here's another freebie for you. What is the tool that we're going to use to actually determine a profit-taking level? There is actually a very simple tool that traders use to, to measure whether it's justifiable to take the trade. Any you do, let's see, do you guys on the uh, lounge, what, where am I going with this? What is it I want to see? Thank you, Dunjay. Dunjay for the win. Excellent. D wired. I don't know who you are, but awesome. Um, I want to see that I can potentially see a 50% move that equates to more than that two to one. What do you think, guys? Is that realistic here? There's the 50% rule. 
Oh, you're David. Okay. D wired. I'll have to try and remember that. Uh, what's going on here? Joshua says, be careful with the alt index, the run up the cash. Okay. Yeah, I got that. And then somebody posted a whole bunch of, I don't know what all those numbers are. Josh, what are you going for with there? M1, M2, M3, M4, M5? What's that? Uh, they changed the um, Tom built in a backup file. Scroll up in the lounge. Okay, well, I'll read that after I'm done this, uh, this video here. Uh, oh, it doesn't include Bcash. Oh, interesting. Wow, that's cool. So uh, we're squawking on about, oh, be careful about Bcash in these alt indexes, but it turns out Bcash isn't in there. So go figure. Okay, so let's finish off our sort of freebie for the uh, the um, the YouTube audience today. And I don't know, you guys in the lounge, have you gotten any value out of me my rant here this morning, or is anybody having fun? I don't know. Any value? What do you think, Alex? I always like to use Alex as my barometer. Oh, yeah, you think I'm doing okay? And actually, Albert is our marketing guy. So, Albert, this is sort of what we want to do going forward with these uh, public presentations. You think I'm putting a good face on TRI? <laughs> I haven't sworn too much, have I? <laughs> uh, okay, good. Excellent. Albert says this is exactly what we want to do. All right, awesome. Great. Um, What Ali uh, Sen says, I am working instead of relaxing. Don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> you mean while watching the video here? Is that what you're talking about? I'm making you guys work. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, uh, back to our story. Um, <sighs> hey, is that my Slackliner, Xavier? Are you my Slackliner over on YouTube? Kind of lost, uh, I, and there's a really nice weather out uh, just even right now here in Vancouver, right? I don't know whether that's my slackliner, uh, Xavier, but uh, he's locally here in Vancouver, and he does slacklining. But anyway, not too many people in the world. Oh, no, okay, that's a different Xavier. Sorry, not too many people named Xavier in this world. Okay, uh, back to the story, sorry. Um, we want to see whether it's justifiable to get a uh, two-to-one risk score. So the great part about it, you know, especially for all you uh, uh, YouTubers and stuff, and you're kind of like new to trading and what the hell is this YouTube, you know, uh, this site trading view gives you a lot of tools that you can actually use for free. And this uh, fib tool is a really handy way. Hopefully everybody can see how I've drawn this 50% level. And the irony of it all is that this is just the rally from May. Like we could actually zoom out and holy crap, the old high is way up there. But if we just use this simple uh, rally peak from back in the spring, right, there is that, you know, April uh, 420 event rally window that I was talking to everybody about happening, that normal sort of seasonal bounce. And then, of course, we cratered into the summer. But anyway, the point here is you can go on a site like TradingView. You figured out where your uh, entries are, right? We said just we're going to buy the double bottom 589. If I'm going to risk against those lows, right, so I'm going to plunk, boom, I just went and bought. We already know exactly where we're going to risk against, that 406. And you can even just go into this tool and actually type the numbers in, right? So we said we're going to buy at 589.31. We're going to uh, risk against 406. Why don't we risk to, say, I don't know, 403. So we're going to assume that these lows are going to be taken out by a buck or two, uh, and we'll give the market $3 to swim around that low. If it breaks the 403, we're gone. And then we're just going to simply drag the targeting tool up to the 50% level, and can everybody see, if I take this trade, can you see that this risk-reward is greater than 2 to 1? What number does that say? 2.9 to 1. And that, sadly, is actually the secret to trading. You don't know whether this thing's act this W is actually going to hold. Nobody does. And anybody who tells you that they know that a market has bottomed or they know that a market has topped, they're full of fucking horseshit. And I apologize, YouTube, for being sweary. 
I apologize for family that maybe has kids listening, but that's the truth. And what I really, you know, especially if you listen to like, you know, Twitter and stuff, it's just opinions. People just squawking opinions, opinions, opinions. And some people even got upset at me um, back in the spring where I'd say, okay, well, I'm going to go and nanny nibble this. I have no idea if the floor is going to hold, but it looks like it's a good level. And the floors didn't hold. Well, the bottom line is, um, uh, I'm sorry, dumping Megan. I, uh, I I like to swear I'm an old gnarly trader. I tried really hard to keep it in line earlier, but <laughs> every once in a while they pop out. But when so, like what really irks me is when you go on, uh, you know, these social media sites and these people are like, oh well, I, it's absolutely. I'm I'm guaranteeing that this will happen. Nobody knows the future. I've been at this damn game 30 years. No, not one single, you know, fortune tellers, Mama Leone with her crystal ball, not one single fortune teller back in the 1980s ever predicted the fall of the of the uh, Soviet Union. Not a single one. They went back and they looked at every single prediction in the 1980s and no one predicted the fall of the Soviet Union. You would think that if you knew the future, somebody might have been like, well, you know, the Soviet Union's probably going to collapse. Not a single fortune teller saw that coming. So it just goes to show nobody knows the future. Nobody. All we can do here is we just play statistics. That's what we do as traders. And that is the brutal, hard truth of quote unquote trading is really what you are is you are a statistician. Sucks, but that's just the brutal reality of this. So even if this thing is gold-plated setup, there is still a statistical probability that this might fail. And you have to put yourself into a position that if it does fail, you actually smarten up. Now, if you take really, 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 really low risk, you know, like uh, I used to run a uh, an, a, a simple uh, model for the site called our Little Old Lady um, portfolio, where we don't risk more than five percent of our money in any one idea. And really, the best way to run Little Old Ladies is to like throw one percent of your portfolio at an idea, and you're just going to simply just hold on to the position. You think it's a pretty good level. You believe in the story. You like the fundamentals. Yada yada yada. That's fine. But if you are starting to take uh, more risk and you are in jeopardy of breaking that 5% rule, then you have no choice. You have to smarten up because one trade could destroy you. You know, look at that Ethereum trade. If I had put like 50% of my account into this uh, setup from back in the summer and it failed and I did nothing, I would be absolutely wiped out. But because I put like almost nothing into the trade, I can still manage it. Where the hell is that damn Ethereum chart? Uh, anyway, I got to wind this up. I've been talking way too long, but just having fun. Okay, so uh, finish off this thought about, and I'm not endorsing Bcash. Like I said, I, I'm not really the biggest fan of um, centralized cryptocurrencies. That sort of defeats the whole purpose of this. But a good illustration, if you are a fan of uh, this coin, and this W on an intraday basis has actually fired. And what would be really cool is I want to actually follow this story over the next few weeks. And I might even um, maybe even come on this, this uh, YouTube uh, actual link because it's a, it's a public. Uh, uh, in fact, actually, you know what we'll do just for fun? Why don't we, because um, I think this was tweeted out, wasn't it? Uh, let's attach because i think i should be on here but yeah there it is let's attach this uh this bcash chart uh to uh this uh tweet uh and let's follow this uh, uh the story as it as it goes um so we'll call this uh b uh and what does it go like b e cash is that how he wants it like that Probably gonna get some serious fucking hate mail from you know who. 
<laughs> oh, okay. B catch like that, eh? Okay. Uh, C H E like that. B catch. All right. So let's let's follow this as a, as example setup, and I'm not endorsing it. I'm just using it as an example of a setup. All right. Uh, and let's see how this plays out. My hunch is. And actually, uh, we'll preface this with, uh, I've been at this game for like 20, 30 years, a hell of a long time. Got my first job in this industry in 1988. So just, uh, you know, <laughs> a while. Um, I found that W's work about somewhere between about 60 to 70% of the time. Um, so... I would simply say, and we probably should write on here, the statistical probability of this trade working is somewhere between 60 to 70%. Um, and we'll call it set up, right? Something like that. And we'll call this the double bottom. Uh, double bottom with 50%. Target tag setup. Something simple like that. Okay. Uh, and here's the key to, to winning at, at this game over the long term, right? You guys have to understand this, right? Um, the key to winning at this game is don't set yourself up that this trade has to work. That's not the way professionals work this business. In fact, you know, I'll leave this with you guys. You need to understand that actually when I left the prop trading firm, they were very angry at me. They were like, Brian, you're wasting your time going and talking to the public like this. Why are you doing this site? They won't get it. it you're just, you're, you're wasting your breath. You have to understand that at 60 to 70 cent to percent probability, ironically enough, what that means is I'm absolutely guaranteeing you, absolutely guaranteeing you that I will be wrong 30 to 40% of the time. That's a big number, isn't it? Right? That's a big freaking number. 30 to 40% of the time, I will get blown out here. But... When I am right, what has to happen? And this is the secret to trading. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Casey. And that's, and you know, Joshua even says here, people hate losing. But you have to understand, that's why most of the public can't do well at this game is you actually have to accept the fact if you do want to trade and make money from trading, you actually have to build a plan that it says it's okay to actually be wrong. And that's where most people in trading fail. And the irony of it all is the whole reason why I built this site, the whole mantra, Alex, you are our level one TA. Uh, Grim's not here. He's our instructor. Hopefully, Alex, you can affirm this. Um, the whole point of the level one program is to move you away from, okay, I'm going to take this trade. It's got to be right. This is going to pay for my kid's college education, blah, 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 to I'm running a small business of trading. And so that means I have to build a plan and I have to vet the reasons why I'm going to act. I have to vet the risk taker that I am. And then I have to put all the pieces in place so that when the setups that I like come in, I take the trade, I risk an appropriate amount based on the type of risk taker that I am. And then when your target actually gets hit, what do you have to do? You got to ring the goddamn register and pay yourself, which ironically enough is extremely hard for the public to do. So... Let's, uh, I, I certainly didn't expect to have this conversation with you guys here today, but let's for fun uh, follow this setup and let's see what happens. 
as I said, there's probably about a 60 to 70 percent profit um, a potential of this trade idea working, uh, which ironically enough for traders, they love those kind of statistics. Um, and, and really what I teach in the course is we want to ideally shoot for 66 percent. What should happen here is if I have three setups that produce two to three to uh, one risk reward ratio and two of them work, but one of them doesn't, can you tell me, am I profitable at the end of the statistical model? Three trades, two work, one doesn't. I get paid two at, at least two to one risk reward on the setup that I take, am I profitable? And the answer, of course, is clearly yes. The interesting thing is if you can uh, hunt and trade setups with greater than two to one risk reward, you don't even have to be right 50% of the time. You can have half of your trades fail and you're still a profitable trader. That's the key to making money as traders. Okay, um, I've just blah, 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 blah. It's uh, 1230 here. I actually have to head off and uh, give my son an awesome afternoon. Um, so I'm going to end the video at that for today. I sure hope you guys uh, enjoyed um, the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we had our marketing guy on here earlier. Um, so if anything, we might even want to sort of set him up as sort of um, our liaison with the public. Um, his name's Albert. Um, but, um, you know, regular site people, I hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation. What do you think, guys, in the lounge here? Did you get any value out of what I talked about here today? Joshua says, owning the BCS show today, BB. Love it. All right. Casey says, always. Kevin says, love it. Uh, even Diana. Hello, Diana. Diana is our resident meerkat. <laughs> Such a cutie. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, there you are. Uh, contact, please, Albert. Actually, okay, that's good. So Mott Media, I don't know uh, who you are, but uh, by all means, um, we can, uh, if you want to post like a comment or something on this, um, on this uh, broiler chicken show or something along those lines, um, um, I, uh, I'll be more than happy to get Albert in contact with you. And yeah, for whatever it's worth, Frenchy French, um, I haven't been that active. I've been, you know, we're trying to get our, uh, our, you know, the, the website, this new company all structured and heading in a good direction. I haven't been overly active, uh, trading the alts, uh, this season. I've just been sort of just cooling my jets. Uh, but, um, but, um, Man, uh, and, and please, you guys in the YouTube audience, maybe just type in um, for the rest of the people in YouTube. Uh, but on the site, man, people are banging out doubles like daily now. Uh, we're back into that type of environment where it's just getting absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and it's great. I mean, I love to hear people making money from trading and lots of smiles on people's faces and stuff. It's taken a while. Uh, for the market to turn around uh, and people start uh, making money from trading again and the torrent of banging out doubles that I it, almost on a daily basis now we're back into that type of environment. So it's great to see. I'm super stoked about that. Um, but um, if anything, I've just been a little bit lazy. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, you guys have yourselves a great rest of your day. Um, all the best uh, and uh, bye for now.